was on. <laughs> President Trump there is taking a photo with the interns, the White House interns. He would then tell the media to be quiet, and he would then turn and tell the interns, you see, they're not supposed to be asking questions right now, but they did anyway. Right, so the eye roll is hard to interpret because he's maybe rolling his eyes at the media, not at the outcome of the session. True, true. And, but both interpretations would be accurate. He <laughs> would roll his eyes at the media for sure, and he'd also roll the eyes uh, at the thought of Jeff Sessions' leaving office. Why? Because the Washington Post is reporting what's pretty obvious, which is that the president is looking for a replacement for Jeff Sessions. You just don't treat a sitting attorney general the way you do, uh, the way the president is, if you want him to stay. All right. And just moments ago, the president tweeted out of nowhere, Attorney General Jeff Sessions has taken a very weak position on Hillary Clinton crimes. Interesting word for a president to use. Where are emails and DNC server and intel leakers. Let's bring back the panel. David Gregory, Chris Saliza, and John Avlon. So, David Gregory, what do you make of the posturing towards the Attorney General by our President? Well, look, uh, it's no longer shocking given this President and, uh, and what he's done and what his views are. Uh, I think, you know, the only conclusion is that this President wants to shame Jeff Sessions into resigning. He has no regard for the independence of the Department of Justice or the rule of law. You know, everyone was outraged when he fired the FBI director investigating him, Jim Comey, rightfully so, by the way. But I don't think there's any reason to believe that Trump will stop. I think he'd be, I think he'll fire his attorney general. I think he may make a move on the special counsel and he'll take all comers uh, because he doesn't seem to care about democratic processes or institutions and certainly thinks the investigation about Russia is a loyalty test and not something to be uh, investigated thoroughly and that the presidency should be protected and that our electoral system should be protected. So if you play this out, if he wants to sack Sessions, what's going to happen? Rod Rosenstein is the deputy. He probably resigns or he gets fired. So does the president think that he's going to get some loyalists to him confirmed by the United States Senate? I mean, that is crazy. I think Republicans might on this one finally balk a little bit, given how popular Sessions is among conservatives and indeed among the kind of, you know, nativist right that counts as a big part of uh, Trump nation. Go ahead, John. Look, you know, the president just tweeting moments ago calling his attorney general weak. Right. That's the narrative he's trying to set. Beleaguered was yesterday. Right. So this is an attempt to force him out and attack him the way he did his opponents on the campaign trail. It's also a resurgence of another campaign trail riff. Lock her up. And, and, and what I think also is being done is an attempt to say, we're going to investigate Hillary Clinton. We're going to prosecute her. Yeah. That's that's the hanging offense, allegedly, for Jeff Sessions. But the larger game is exactly what, uh, what we, heard, we heard it yesterday with yeah. Sean Duffy, a favorite surrogate of the president. Out of nowhere, Chris Elizabeth started talking about how, well, if you really want to know what Russia did to get to the bottom of it, you need the DNC server. Right. I mean, really, that's the beginning of the trail. So, Chris, yeah, give the audience a little bit of a background on that in terms of what we understand about those servers and why that statement sure. makes or doesn't make sense. So, look, uh, Donald Trump has been fixated on, and I, it is a somewhat odd, there, there, Hillary Clinton, about more than half of the emails that were on her private server, she deleted before they ever made it to any closer inspection based on her lawyers going through them, uh, not one by one, but going through them, broadly speaking, and saying this is personal. Okay, so no, they made that call. No one else did. They were deleted. There's some debate over whether they can be recovered or not. So he is fixated on it. The other thing is the DNC resisted turning over uh, its server to the FBI in the wake of the hacking and the WikiLeaks investigation. So these two things have become big causes on the conservative right. The issue is Donald Trump won. Uh, in no small part, I think, because of conversations about uh, the email server, the way, the uh, poor ways in which Hillary Clinton handled it. Um, it. You know, Donald Trump is doing this thing that he did in the business world, uh, too. He doesn't, for all of his, you're fired, you know, uh, bravado, he doesn't actually love firing <laughs> people. Uh, yes, he did get rid of Jim Comey, uh, but... Uh, outside of Comey, you have Sean Spicer, who he basically asked to stay, even though he had appointed Scaramucci 
yeah. for the communications director job. And you have Mike Flynn, who he fired because he lied to uh, he Mike Flynn lied to Mike right. Pence. But Trump has repeatedly said, ah, I wish we hadn't fired him. So yeah. he doesn't really like to fire people. What he's doing here is 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 making it so uncomfortable for Jeff Sessions that he hopes Jeff Sessions yeah. resigns. I mean, you can't. You shouldn't. Chris, you said. Sorry, Allison, just really quickly. Chris said, you, you know, we you shouldn't treat your attorney general like this. You shouldn't treat anyone like this. Yeah, I mean, you if you have an issue with someone. You should deal with it privately and say you either have to go or you have to stay and we have to change this conversation. Yeah. Not just attack him to the point where you force him out. I mean, this is bullying. Go ahead, John. Look, he, he's trying to back channel a Saturday Night Massacre. That, that, that's what's happening, right? If, 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 if Sessions resigns, then you appoint someone else that's right. who then assumes power uh, and, and says, you know, the special counsel thing is really a terrible distraction. And as Chris you've said, you know, I'm going to be in a position to investigate more effectively because I'm not directly connected with the campaign, depending on who it is. Uh, and, 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 and that's the larger game here. It's also about repeated attempts. You know, he, he goes after the independent uh, journalists and independent judiciary consistently because those are forces that can constrain and hold presidential power accountable. Uh, and that's why this all demands our, our attention. Um, and, and the Hillary Clinton stuff is simply because the only thing that unites his coalition right now seems to be hatred of Hillary Clinton. It's, it's, a, go it's a golden oldie Well, he knows it. Look, Donald but, Trump, the biggest mistake his adversaries make is questioning the intelligence of the president uh, because that's right. it's, it's just a, a mistake. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's very savvy, and he's very good at manipulating narrative. His latest tweet, again, he's probably watching the morning shows, not liking what he's hearing, and he's engineering what he believes to be the truth. The problem is that the acting head of the FBI, this is the president, good, there's the tweet, and the person in charge of the Hillary investigation, Andrew McCabe, got $700,000 from H. Hillary for his wife. The, just, Chris, just real quickly, contextually there, what he, he's made this claim before. He's talking about a, a half a million dollar donation from Terry McAuliffe, the governor of Virginia's political uh, organization, to a, to a Virginia state Senate candidate, a Andrew McCabe's wife, uh, who ran in 2015. So... So they it's set it up from, really far in advance. It's not from Hillary Clinton, just by way of context. Yes, Terry McAuliffe and the Clintons are clearly aligned. No one would question that, but it, it's not yeah. from her. This is one of those things where he sort of elides a series of facts and then tries to mm -hmm. make it true by saying it over and over again. And it, it just, that doesn't make can it we, true. Can we just keep our eye on Republicans here? Because this is what's really interesting. Here the president is essentially ripping members of his own party on health care saying they're a fraud you know they said they were going to repeal and replace obamacare they haven't done it now they have a chance when he's not really driving that on the day of the vote he's out there yeah. further humiliating his ag so you know trump is sabotaging himself or to your point chris maybe he's looking at it differently i mean he is allowing himself to be completely consumed by this maybe he wants to run on the russia investigation for re-election <laughs> I mean, honestly, I mean, maybe he thinks, yeah, I'll just keep fighting this big fight because that's all his he seems to be able to do. He's using all that capital for that purpose. Gentlemen, thank you very much for the perspective on all of this. Obviously, it'll be a very big day and week. Well, we do. You know why? Because this vote matters, even though it's just procedural and to open up debate, which wouldn't be a bad thing. It's nice when our lawmakers actually talk about what they want to do to the lives of the rest of us. But we have a lot of the players for you today. Look at your screen. Key members of Congress, not just about what's going to happen with health care, but also surrounding Jeff Sessions. You have a lot of experience on that screen with these types of maneuvers. So we'll be talking to all of them this morning, get their take. So a major win for the Trump White House, the big decision in court that is boosting the president's controversial voter integrity commission. We'll tell you about it next. President Trump intensifying his attacks on everyone, but specifically his top law enforcement officer after calling Jeff Sessions, the attorney general of the United States, beleaguered. The president tweeting this morning that the AG has taken a very weak position on Hillary Clinton crimes. Where are emails and DNC server and intel leakers? He then went on to attack the acting head of the FBI, uh, suggesting that he had been paid off by Hillary Clinton. Joining me now is Ken Cuccinelli, former Virginia Attorney General and President of the Senate Conservatives Fund. Ken, have you ever heard of anything like this from 
anybody in any position of leadership, let alone a president of the United States? Uh, well, I suppose so, but but give me never, an example, Ken. Never in any. Who have you ever never, heard doing I, I, anything I'm, like this? I was just going to say, I was just going to say nothing like anything beyond a small little business, right? You know, and um, and it and it certainly is phenomenally distracting, even to just Jeff Sessions doing the job of the Department of Justice. Um, as he said, he's going to keep doing his job, keep showing up, and I. That's what I would do if I were him, and How? I expect he'll do. How? Um, but it also, it How, also though, distracts Ken? from the broader agenda of the president. Right, but let's take well, it look, one at a time. He's doing this for a reason. Doing in the department. Well, but how does it not, you know, how does it not stop everything? If you had the president of the United States calling you out consistently, not meeting with you, how do you focus on anything about other than whether or not you need to leave? Well, because you're a professional. And look, remember the, the night that Comey was fired, I remember sitting on panels and, and listening to everybody say, oh, there'll be no more Russian investigation. It's all going to come to a stop, blah, blah. That's just not right. I mean, there's all the professionals at the FBI kept doing their job every day. The counterintelligence effort went on every day. And look, what goes on in the Department of Justice is overwhelmingly carried on by professional, day-to-day -day professionals, and Jeff Sessions leads them, directs them. He is still doing all of that. It, this is embarrassing, it's frustrating for him, but it doesn't stop him from doing his job unless he lets it. And I think he's made it very clear he isn't going to let it stop him from doing his job. Do you think that this is a none too subtle indication that Jeff Sessions is not long for that job? Well, look, let's let's look ahead one step. Let's say that Jeff Sessions were no longer the attorney general. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the confirmation hearings for whomever followed Jeff Sessions? I have a hard time, frankly, seeing anybody get through that right now. Anybody, no matter how good they were as a simple matter of partisanship, uh, combined with the hand wringing of many of the Republicans in the Senate in a 52-48 Senate where John McCain may or may not be available to vote anyway. And he'd well, be one of the hand wringers. I hear you so, on that. David Gregory yeah, was I, I making a that similar as a point. Possibility. But I don't get it. I don't. Let, let, let's let's dig into that for just one second, because. All right. So let's say Jeff Sessions sure. leaves or the president moves on him and says you have to leave. And it happens. He then puts somebody right. in, maybe even comes to Ken Cuccinelli and says, um, here's the deal. You know, you're so totally qualified for this job. The Republicans like you. Uh, we have right. the numbers. Let's just get one thing straight. You're not recusing yourself from anything to do with this, and I want the special counsel gone. You good with that? Yes, I'm good with that, Mr. President. He has the numbers in the Senate. I don't get where the confidence comes from that the Senate is going to move against the president when they have not stepped up, not the leadership, and not any significant number of Republican senators or congressmen to criticize anything that he has said or done. Where is your confidence that they would step up in a confirmation? Oh, I don't, I, I don't agree with that. I remember sitting with you know, Jake Tapper at the intro to one session a, a week or so ago, and he just rattled off Republican after Republican after Republican who were making critical remarks. And I think, I think you'd see a lot of hesitation, not outright criticism, but you'd see hesitation to the point of not moving nominations forward among some Republicans. I mean, you've got Lindsey Graham, John McCain would undoubtedly be sensitive to this, Susan Collins, Lisa Murkowski. You're going to have a, a whole cadre of senior Republican senators that are going to be particularly prickly about moving any any nomination forward. And I think that leaves Jeff Sessions right where he is, continuing to do the job with this continuing reign of, you know, Twitter annoyance. And um, but he will do the job. Um, what won't happen is the rest of the president's agenda will be slowed down by this distraction. How Capitol so? Capitol Hill is distracted by it. Well, because if this is what you're talking about, look at when he had that lunch with the Republican senators over health care. Mm -hmm. uh, suddenly, that whole day and into the next was spent by Republican senators talking about, oh, gosh, how can we solve this problem? How can we get through? I mean, there, he generated, as president, using the bully pulpit, he generated movement at least sub, sub, substantive discussion about how to solve the problems they were confronting on health care. He can do that as president. 
He can't do that if he continually beleaguers himself with the Twitter feed. He sees it as a source of strength, though, Ken. He sees it as his uh, calling out the sewer, distinguishing himself from career politicians. You know, it was a big part of the motivation to hire Donald Trump was that he was an outsider. He was different. You don't see this as just enhancing that image. No, no. I, I mean, look, he had a unique formula for winning the presidency and and his his direct connection to the american people bypassing every other channel was absolutely critical to winning that race absolutely critical and for whatever anybody wanted to say about whatever he thumbed out he used it spectacularly he used it brilliantly but i do not think that the way he has used it in the office of president has been helpful to him like it was when he was campaigning to become president. Mm. No, that's an important distinction. Ken Cuccinelli, always appreciate you here on New Day, making the case, making us Chris, good to be with you. Always. See you soon. Allison. Chris, let me tell you about sports. Please. Something I know a lot about. Could not be tolerated. This is New Day with Chris Cuomo and Allison Camerata. We want to welcome our viewers in the United States and around the world. This is New Day. It is Tuesday, July 25th, 6 o'clock here in New York. Here's our starting line. Up first, a crucial vote today in the Senate to begin debating a repeal of Obamacare. Senator John McCain, who was recently diagnosed with brain cancer, will head back to Washington to cast what could be a deciding vote. Next, President Trump's public feud with Attorney General Jeff Sessions intensifies. The Washington Post reports that the president and his advisors are discussing the possibility of replacing Sessions, who Mr. Trump called beleaguered. House investigators are set to meet with Jared Kushner today after he denied any collusion with Russia in meetings with the Senate investigators Monday, as the House is going to get together today for a vote on tough sanctions bills against Russia. The question is, will President Trump sign that measure into law, even though it limits his influence? And the president is vowing to steer clear of politics when he gave this Boy Scouts <laughs> speech last night. And I'm laughing because he did not steer clear of politics. He gave them an earful. The president's speech was filled with attacks on his predecessor, his one-time rival, and, of course, the media. Remember, he was talking to the Boy Scouts. CNN has it all covered. Let's begin with CNN national correspondent Suzanne Malvo, live on Capitol Hill. Suzanne. Oh, good morning, Chris. Well, this is an extraordinary effort. Senator John McCain is going to be boarding a plane later this morning. He's going to head back to Washington to participate in that critical health care vote, despite his brain cancer diagnosis just less than a week ago. Now, his presence is really meant to bolster the Republican leadership's effort to get one step closer to passage, but is far from certain whether or not it's going to be enough. Senator John McCain's unexpected return to Washington, adding last-minute momentum to the Senate Republicans' ongoing push to dismantle Obamacare. I know many of us have waited literally years for this moment to finally arrive, and at long last, it has. The Senate will vote today to begin debating the health care bill that narrowly passed the House in May. If McConnell secures the 50 votes needed to proceed, the Senate will then begin considering amendments to that legislation, although it's unclear what changes would be put forth and how the Republican Party would come to an agreement after being unable to do so thus far. It's kind of hard to make a determination if you don't know what you're proceeding to. President Trump ratcheting up the pressure, using the bully pulpit to warn fellow Americans to get on board or risk paying a price Thank with voters. Much. Remember, repeal and replace, repeal and replace. They kept saying it over and over again. Any senator who votes against starting debate is telling America that you are fine with the Obamacare nightmare. The Senate Majority Leader can only afford to lose the support of two Republicans, even with McCain's expected yes vote. Senator Susan Collins of Maine has already said she remains a firm no. And several others remain undecided. I can't say right now. I'm, I, I'm still very much a no. President Trump needling his health secretary about securing the vote at a Boy Scouts event in West Virginia on Monday night. You're going to get the votes? He better get them. He better get them. Oh, he better. Otherwise, I'll say, Tom, you're fired. The president insisting this event wasn't the place for political rhetoric, 
Who the hell wants to speak about politics when I'm in front of the Boy Scouts, right? Before launching into one attack after another, blasting his predecessor. Did President Obama ever come to a jamboree? And his former rival, Hillary Clinton, again boasting about his election win. That map was so red, it was unbelievable, and they didn't know what to say. We have a tremendous disadvantage in the Electoral College. Popular vote is much easier. And rehashing his favorite campaign lines. We ought to change it from the word swamp to the word cesspool or perhaps to the word sewer. So here's how the health care vote is going to play out today. Republican senators will meet behind closed doors for their weekly uh, lunch. That's where rank, rank and file members will push, make their final pitch to move this forward. Then it's expected to have a procedural vote later in the afternoon. That will determine whether or not Republicans' effort to overturn Obamacare lives or dies. Allison, Chris. Suzanne, thank you very much for setting all of that up. Let's bring in our panel to discuss this very important day. We have CNN political analyst David Gregory, CNN politics reporter and editor at large Chris Eliza, and CNN political analyst John Ablon. John, I'll start with you here in studio. Um, it was Senator Bob Corker of Tennessee who says that they're enter entering a Wild West phase <laughs> on the health care vote because anything is possible today. Yeah. They have a series of procedural votes, uh -huh. as Suzanne just said, and then who knows? What happens next? Yeah, I mean that, that's a that's a pretty cool way to describe total chaos. Um, you know, th th this is this is uh, this is pretty unprecedented. I mean, here we are talking major bill, a seven-year priority, and yet Republicans today are embracing and advancing the idea they criticized rightly Nancy Pelosi for. You have to vote on the bill and know what's in it. Um, no one's sure exactly what's going to be put forward today, other than they're going to do the repeal, not replace first. And then let's see how many amendments we can tack on the donkey. It's going to be crazy. <laughs> David, what do you make of the situation in terms of the urgency to get things done when you don't know what those things are? Well, I just think it's really interesting, the specter of the president shaming his party. I mean, this is really, you see all the divisions in the Republican Party in the way that Trump campaigned on them in 2016. To say you have establishment Republicans who can't get this one thing done. And yet it's the president who's not really driving this policy with a set of ideas that the Senate is coalescing around. This is the Senate doing its own thing, trying to depart from what the House did uh, and realizing how unpopular this is politically and trying to pick off uh, various members. I mean, the math is really tough even to begin to debate. Uh, to begin debate, let alone to find a path uh, that you're going to pick up the key folks like a Capito in West Virginia or Murkowski uh, in Alaska, maybe a Mike Lee, Ted Cruz. So it's just not clear where we're going. But you have a president who's standing by, in effect, saying, I'm going to campaign against all of you uh, if you can't get this done, very much separating himself from the party at this point. Uh, so, Chris, Susan Collins has already said at the moment that she is a no. Here's our list of people to watch, key senators to watch today and how they vote. What are you keeping an eye on? I, I mean, David's right. The, the, the math is still really tough. So basically, Collins is a hard no. So now you can, uh, and McCain is coming back, which to be honest, 24 hours ago, I would have said probably wouldn't happen. So th this is clearly their hope in giving them momentum. I think it is hard to say to John McCain, come back from Arizona, given what he's fighting to be the 48th vote. Uh, to begin debate on this, you know, I, I, my guess is they were able to say you'd be the 50th vote. But that means all those people that you just showed, Allison, including Lisa Murkowski, including Rob Portman of Ohio, who was undecided, including Shelley Moore Capito of West Virginia. They need all those folks. Uh, you know, Rand Paul has been back and forth basically saying, I'll I'll vote for the motion to proceed, which all they're doing is voting for a motion to start debate that he would do that if he got a clean repeal vote, so he's a, you know, maybe too leaning. Yes. It, the math is still really hard. I just, the thing that I keep coming back to is I cannot imagine Mitch McConnell or John Cornyn uh, went to John McCain and said, come back here in the midst of, you know, we're, we're a week, less than a week removed from the, the learning that John McCain had brain cancer. Come back to D.C. for a procedural vote in which you will be the 48th 
vote to proceed to debate, and we're not sure about 49 and 50. Maybe that's what they did, and John McCain is just coming because he wants to be here for it, but typically the readout would be he's coming because they believe that they he is that 50th vote, that they can at least get this thing to a debate. Mm -hmm. Once you go beyond that, as John points out, I mean, we have no idea where it goes. They're just trying to get over that, that hurdle of starting a debate. They're trying to get a win. Uh, and really, conceptually, starting debate on this wouldn't be a bad thing, seeing how there has been none. You know, that would be good. Right. The McCain ploy, also fairly obvious, John Avalon. They're going for a Willis Reed moment. McCain yeah. is a minted that. warrior. That's what he That's is. Right. His sense of duty is incomparable. So him coming back makes perfect sense. The idea of what they're going to accomplish, though, is where you may be cheapening that currency of John McCain. You're bringing him back just to check a box and get a win when you really don't have any plan B. Well, it, it, it's, it's a pretty big win, and it's a big a moment as it gets in these votes. Remember, in the Obamacare vote, you know, you had senators sick like a dog, like Harry Reid was rolled in, you know, to vote. Every vote counts. But John McCain is a warrior, and this has been a longstanding priority of his. And, and vote counts aside, I think it is about momentum. It's about commitment to achieving a conservative agenda. The problem is we don't know actually what, what conservative agenda specifically they're going to put forward that affects you know, millions and millions and millions of people. Okay, another thing we need to talk about. David, uh, the president went to this big Boy Scouts jamboree last night, and he gave a big speech in front of them. It was, you know, sort of part campaign rally, part Boy Scout messaging, sort of. I mean, you know, it, it, the Boy Scout, the Washington Post pointed out that the Boy Scouts' mission is to be courteous and kind. Sometimes this deviated from perhaps that message. So let's play a clip for you. You want to achieve your dreams, I said. Who the hell wants to speak about politics when I'm in front of the Boy Scouts, right? As the scout law says, a scout is trustworthy, loyal. We could use some more loyalty, I will tell you that. Did President Obama ever come to a jamboree? Do you remember that incredible night with the maps and the Republicans are red? and the Democrats are blue, and that map was so red, it was unbelievable. David Gregory, your thoughts. <laughs> it's just so, I mean, I, when the tour de force of going through the states, you know, uh, on, on the map, nobody thought we could win Michigan, and we're winning Michigan. Um, I, <laughs> look, I think it was, it, it was striking on a couple of things. First of all, the, the not so subtle dig there at the Attorney General Jeff Sessions, who apparently was an Eagle Scout and was not invited to, to this, despite other cabinet members who were scouts uh, who were there, like Rick Perry and Rex Tillerson, too, apparently was an Rick Eagle Perry, Scout. Rick Perry, who he asked if you have the votes, and Rick Perry <laughs> nods yes. Yeah, I'm good. We got him for you. Yeah, he's the energy no, secretary. <laughs> so it's, it's, I mean, and you're, you're in front of all these Boy Scouts, and you're talking about this great victory that we had in the electoral map. I mean, these kids were not... We're not voting uh, in the election. So it was, um, it was striking. But I thought that the barb at Sessions uh, was really revealing. And it, it says something. I mean, here we are on a day when the president's trying to get health care, a, uh, a piece of legislation that he has not driven. He has just been really working from the outside now against Republicans. And he's sabotaging himself with his obsession around loyalty and in taking on the Russia investigation to the point that he appears to be humiliating uh, Jeff Sessions, his attorney general, publicly in an effort to force him out, uh, despite perhaps thinking of all the complications that creates if he ultimately uh, achieves that goal of either firing him or, or getting him to resign. And the contradiction, you know, so he plays on loyalty. He's not talking about scout loyalty. He's talking about, you know, what's been happening yeah. uh, with him and his political people around him. Trustworthy, loyal. Yeah, but what about helpful? friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, thrifty, forget about that in government, you know, brave, <laughs> clean, and reverent. And there he got are a lot of applause. ideals. I mean, he got a lot, for he's going the president off the message, United he States. got a lot of enthusiastic applause. He's the president applause. of the United States, of course he's going to get applause, but I mean, John, what did you make of this? Forget about the fact that he goes, who, would, who the hell would want to talk about politics <laughs> when you were the boys? You would. Yeah. <laughs> You'll talk about politics anywhere, especially if it involves bashing others. Yeah, look, I, I, you know, 
in the one hand, I thought what was troubling was when, at mention of President Obama's name, there were boos in, in that environment. That That is not courteous or kind. It doesn't live up to the ideals. Washington should try a little harder to live up to those ideals. But tone comes from the top, and courteous and kind have been missing from the building. Um, and, and that's something, I think, for all, all folks to reflect on. That speech, um, it was a political rally at a place he said he didn't want to be political. But, but Trump has a magnetic inability to not bring everything back to himself. And, and the idea of self-transcendence has uh, been lost. All right, panel, stick around if you would. We have much more to talk about with you. President Trump intensifying his criticism, not just of Hillary Clinton, but of his own staff, Attorney General Jeff Sessions. He used the word beleaguered, but remember the reason Sessions is beleaguered is because of what the president just said about him. The Washington Post is reporting that the president is weighing his options to replace Sessions. There's been no shortage of leaks on that front either. CNN senior Washington correspondent Joe Johns live at the White House with more. The word is that Rudy Giuliani brushed aside the thought of being attorney general, but he did think early on he was the perfect man for that job. That's right, and he actually gave Sessions just a bit of a vote of confidence, if you will, Chris. Look, the Attorney General, we're told, was here just yesterday meeting with the White House counsel, but we're also told he and the President did not meet and have not spoken since that remarkable rebuke in the interview with the New York Times just last week. The new communications director would not answer when asked whether Sessions ought to resign, but he did say the two men need to sit down and talk about what the future looks like. Mr. President, should Jeff Sessions resign? <laughs> <laughs> Attorney General Jeff Sessions' future at the Justice Department in question today, with the Washington Post reporting that President Trump and his advisors are discussing the possibility of replacing him, despite the fact that he has been one of the president's most loyal supporters. We could use some more loyalty, I will tell you that. The president publicly shamed his top law enforcement officer again Monday, labeling him as beleaguered and asking why he's not investigating Hillary Clinton. The dizzying escalation began last week in the president's interview with the New York Times. Sessions should have never recused himself. And if he, would, if he was going to recuse himself, he should have told me before he took the job and I would have picked somebody else. Despite this public rebuke, Sessions insisted he has no plans to step down. We love this job, we love this department, and I plan to continue to do so as long as uh, that is appropriate. Texas Senator Ted Cruz and former New York Mayor Rudy Giuliani dismissing reports they are being considered as possible replacements, with Giuliani expressing support for Sessions' decision to recuse himself from the Russia investigation. I uh, believe the Sessions made the right decision under the rules of the Justice Department. President Trump lashing out against his attorney general, who he blames for the Russia investigation. It comes on the same day his son-in-law and senior advisor Jared Kushner met with congressional investigators for the first time, denying any collusion with Russia and defending the president. Donald Trump had a better message and ran a smarter campaign, and that is why he won. Suggesting otherwise ridicules those who voted for him. The president tweeted just a few minutes ago, once again, calling out the attorney general and uh, once again talking about the president's perceived desire or need for an investigation of Hillary Clinton. Jared Kushner is back on Capitol Hill today answering more questions. The president uh, is expected to at least give reporters an opportunity to ask him questions when he appears uh, with the Lebanese uh, prime minister in the Rose Garden later today. Chris and Allison, back to you. Okay, Joe, thank you very much for all of that. So, given the president's latest attacks, is he considering firing Attorney General Jeff Sessions? What would that mean for the Russia investigation? Our panel tackles all that.